I appreciate you being here. Hello, Kyle. Pardon me? No, they can't now. They're stuck. They're stuck. Even if you are resting. Even if you are just resting. But no, uh, what, what we've been talking about all week is uh, what goes on at the NRS, NRS Training Center. And uh, like John mentioned, I've only got 30 minutes today. Uh, for some reason, I don't know how the mountain man got my spot this morning, but uh, apparently he was just a little bit more important. But I wanted to introduce Shana Goldbranson, and Shana helps me with uh, all of the booking, and, and, and if you call in and you book a private lesson or you book a clinic, uh, you end up talking to Shana. So uh, she's a huge part of what we do, but what I wanted to do today is talk to you more about what the NRS Training Center is about. If, if anybody has any desire about learning to rope uh, or learning to get better with your horses, uh, that's what we do. They, the, the whole entire facility was based around that. So, uh, from, from the, Shay, she ropes. Uh, she's been out there and roped and ropes really good, but understanding horses and, and, and what we're doing on a day to day basis is exactly what we're going after of the educational side. Now, Again, 30 minutes for me to talk to you about team roping today, right? I better be good. I better be real good. Um, what I want to do is I would like to go through the fundamentals and just keep driving that home. I've talked about it all week uh, and, and we'll continue to talk about it, but it doesn't matter who you talk to uh, within our industry, the guys that are here roping and competing this week uh, versus you know going home. I've, I've, I've always used this analogy, and it is, I've never been to a roping yet that I came out of the box on my own two feet, okay? It, it was on the back of a horse. And, and, and if we can go to the arena and we, can, and we can do our groundwork and we can work really, really hard with this and get better with our roping just by what we do on the ground, but at the end of the day, we've got to go get better with those horses. And, and here's what I'm going to throw at you, uh, because... I'm, I'm that same person, I, I'm kind of talking to myself here, that you get done with work that day and you just feel like, man, I don't, I don't really feel like going and wrapping the steers and saddling horses and getting everything up and groom, hooking the tractor up to the drag and, and, and dragging the arena. I think I'm going to pass today. And the best practice that you could have got that day was going and saddling your horse and exercising for 20 minutes. Okay? just to saddle your horse and go exercise and swing your rope because I, I am a huge fan and a proponent of, of teaching, teaching timing through your horse, okay? I, I, I talk a lot about uh, getting in a rhythm with your horse. Uh, Y'all aren't allowed to leave. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay. So when, when you're out there riding your horse and you're swinging your rope, what ends up happening, for everybody to simplify it in their mind, is your job as a roper is to, to understand how to time to your horse and ride your horse. The day and age of, of growing up and being taught to stand up and you can't rope sitting flat on your rear end is gone. And, and, and I'll give you another analogy on that. We, we don't, when we go out there and warm our horses up, we don't stand up. We sit down and we ride them forward and we lope circles or we long trot them. You might be posting, but we're staying in the saddle and we're using our legs to drive our horses forward. As far as swinging your rope, the most natural thing that you do is your tip comes down in stride with your horse. So when your horse's front legs come down, your tip matches it. It's like being in a rocking chair. So the reason that I'm talking to you about this is it's going to tie back into the head and it's going to tie back into the healing. When we do that, then you're, you're automatically in, in time with your horse. Now again, we can work on getting our tip down, we can work on being ready, having our swing put in the right place, we can work on every bit of that, but what I teach and promote on the groundwork is balance. And, and, and I'm going to walk you through a few of those things, but what I'm really trying to get you to think about is riding those horses. I have never ever seen, especially here, you won't see these barrel racers come running down that center alley and right before they get to that first barrel, they're not going to stand up to go around that barrel, are they? They're going to sit down in that pocket and drive that horse's hips around that barrel. Well, it's the same thing for us. As a head or a healer, we've got to ride our horse's hips forward. That means we can't be bound out. And so that's going to lead me into 
my groundwork. When, when I'm doing my groundwork, let me move this one over a little bit. Head nor healing. I'll just go ahead and start on this side. I see this on a daily basis there at the arena. Students don't come to me to learn how to rope. They come to learn me. They come to learn from me how to get better with their rope. And, and, and again, it all ties back to their horse. But when I see students step up to a dummy and they go to rope this dummy and they, they you're thinking, does everybody see where my body posture is right here? Just by doing that right there, guess what I'm training? I'm training my mind to tell my muscles that before I deliver my rope, my body has to move. So again, I come right back and I step up and I go. And little by little, a bad habit has been created. How many of you do it? Yeah. It's okay. We all do it. We all do it. Here's what I want to show you. When I'm doing my groundwork for something on my healing, I've always been taught you've got to swing over the back of the steer, right? We've always heard that. That's the back of the steer. That's not the back of the sawhorse or the back of the rope right. So when I'm doing my groundwork, if I'm swinging over the back of this rope right and this becomes muscle memory, guess what happens when I get in the saddle? Now look at where my tip's at. Versus this. At the target, at the hawk. So I got my tip loaded at my target and now I'm learning to use the tip of my rope. And all the while I'm trying to use my core balance. Everything that I do in my delivery, whether it's right foot forward, left foot forward, I, I'm a huge fan of teaching left foot forward for the simple reason that it's easy for us to square our target, our shoulders to the target. I kind of jumped ahead of myself there, okay? If, if I'm left foot forward, it's real easy for me to face that right leg with my shoulders. Now look at where my shoulders went. Do I have a problem with, with students not squaring up to their target or not putting their uh, left foot forward? No, as long as we do what? My right foot's forward right here as long as I keep my shoulder square to my target. Now I'm using the tip of my rope, okay? I want to jump back right fast because I know I'm going to run out of time and then I'm going to tie it all together. Again, I told you, we're, we're trying to keep it simple. We're trying to keep it simple. And I, have, I bet I have talked to 400 people about that, this one thing this week alone. How many healers do I have in here? Okay. As far as the healing goes, for you to simplify timing in your mind, I already told you your rope is going to be matched to what? The horse's stride. And you're going to say, well, what does that have to do with the hop of the steer? If I match the speed of my horse to the speed of the steer, guess what's back? The legs. So for you to simplify it in your mind, do I think you need to understand timing? You bet I do. You need, you need to be able to understand it. But I also see a lot of people get up there and they come around that corner and then they go to looking for the hop. And when they look for the hop, guess what they quit doing? They quit riding their horse. And then you get the big separation and then you get hung right here again. Okay, your first jump in position is always going to be your best jump. So if I come around the corner riding my horse, then I want to be able to step into it. And as I ride right here, when I get to position, I'm going into a delivery. Okay, I'm going right into the delivery to where I'm using my horse to help me deliver my rope. Now, again, I'm going to go back to this. I use this sled at all of my clinics for this reason. It tracks straight and I see my students right into position and they learn to, to take their shot by using their horse to rope. They use, they use their horse when they get to position. They don't quit because I've, I've gone the other direction. I've gone the other direction and I've watched it progressively get worse from the simple standpoint that they get so caught up in those legs moving that they quit riding. And when they do, their chin moves forward, moves forward, moves forward. Now the horse is getting heavy on the front end and light on the rear end. So as a healer, you know that you come through your corner. And it's amazing that that steer can run wide open down the arena, but then can out hop us going across the arena. Hmm. And we can stay caught up going down, but we can't catch up to him hopping going across. And the only reason we can't is we put the heaviest part of our body over the heaviest part of our horse's body and we make those shoulders heavy and they can't catch up. So this deal right here of being able to ride into your delivery actually teaches you how to deliver your rope. 
okay? How to use your horse. And that's where we get the big stop. That's where we get the big stop. How many of you have problems dallying? <laughs> okay. When, the, the hardest thing to do when we're roping on the dally is because we're bowed out and we're over the front of our horse. So now I've got to go from here, which that horse is again stopping on that front end. It's pulling me further down. It makes it twice as hard to come all the way back and find my saddle horn. The three most common mistakes made you, you see healers make is they bow out and they hit a front leg. Hit a front leg. The tip of the rope hits the ground or hits a front leg. Means you let go too soon. So if you're hitting front legs, you're letting go too soon. The next thing you see, the rope rolls. So the hand comes around like that. Did everybody see my hand roll? Well, there's my, my bottom strand. I always like to cut up. Steve made the, the Texas A&M rope right, and I, I went to school at Texas A&M. So for me to do this is very, very difficult. All right, there's your bottom strand. There's your top strand. If my hand rolls in my delivery, my bottom strand rolls forward. When that rope comes out of my hand as a healer, I shake hands with the right leg. I shake hands with the right leg. See how my hand's up and down right there? That's my delivery. All of the pictures we see in the Superlooper magazine look like what? That's after the catch. The rope's already on the ground. The steer's legs are already in the loop. That's also the same picture that we see what else? Everybody's out of their saddle. Why are they out of their saddle right there? Horse is stopping. But then again, we're taught you've got to stand up to rope. You can't, you can't rope sitting flat on your bottom. You've got to stand up. No, your delivery was here. As that horse stops, it lifts you up out of your saddle. And that's where the knee has to bend. So again, all, all your groundwork is is mental discipline. How, how disciplined are you going to be to make sure that you do this right? When I rope the dummy on the ground, it is balance, position, left leg of the steer even with my right leg in the saddle. My tip is low and down. And when I swing it down there, I learn to use the tip of my rope. Now what I'm doing is following my tip all the way to my target as a healer. So when I get here, now I can let go. Look at where my bottom strand went. Okay? That is the best drill that I feel like I have, have been able to show my healers at all. Because, again, when we start trying to roll around, we get this result right here. And again, this carpet is super, super slick. But at the same time, we start trying to roll that around, we get that effect. We're keeping that bottom strand too high, and it goes. Instead of setting it down to where the tip of the rope hits, and all the while, I'm still practicing what? My balance and staying in the saddle and riding my horse. OK? The, it's not a, I, I, I'm a fan, and I, I am. I do like to rope the dummy a bunch, but I like to rope the dummy a bunch correctly. So when I, when I go out there and I rope the dummies, it's not about how many times I rope it, it's about how many times I rope it correctly. And I'm going to go right back to the same exact deal that I just went through on the healing. When you see headers walk up and rope the dummy the first day of the clinic and they do that right there, they just showed me exactly where they're having their problems on their horse. They leaned forward, they bowed out, they pulled their slack, and their muscle memory became this right here. Now, how many of you headers have a hard time with your horses rating or not, or stepping through your throat? How many of you have a hard time roping slow steers? That's the number one question asked year after year after year. Slow steers, I hate them. And I'm like, man, slow steers are what you win money on. You don't win them on fast steers. So one little thing that you can do on the groundwork to fix that is, again, core balance. When I step up into position, I've got my core balance here. My left foot's forward right now. My shoulders are squared to my target. All that does is set my tip and I'm loaded before I get to the right horn, okay? If I'm right foot forward, just as long as I don't roll over here, right foot forward, keep my shoulder square to my target. But when I pull my slack, I'm, I'm gonna go into a delivery and come back to my heels, okay? If my left hand moves when I pull my slack, I don't go up there and take my rope off 
I say, that gum at my left hand moved. What I do is I say my left hand moved and I put my left hand back in place and I pull my slack five times, six times without moving my left hand because again, all I'm trying to do is train my left hand to stay in place so I can get my dally and ride my horse, okay? But the, again, going back to core balance is not bowing out. Do not bow out over your horse because now you're, you're a passenger, you're not the pilot anymore. If I step up, got it on, I'm coming back to my heels. The Horsemanship 101, how do you teach your horse to stop? For those of you who are having problems with your horse rating on slow cattle, sit down and quit riding. What's the first thing we want to do as ropers? Now do you see where your problem comes into place on slow, slow steers? We nod our head, the left hand comes back as we're swinging. We got it all loaded, we get to position. Next thing you know, we're kind of sitting in this spot right here and look at what happens. Left hand comes all the way back, the tip comes up, and where does our loop usually go? Agreed? That's not going on the internet, is it? All right, so what we need to do is put our left hand down, and instead of pulling right here, we can check those horses off, but I need to just sit down and relax a little bit if I haven't taken my shot, and just guide my rope back to the target. Be ready to rope. I, I, I always teach, it's not, the, the low numbered ropers and the high numbered ropers, there's not a difference in the roping, there's a difference in the preparation. Your rope goes on that head just like mine does. Your, your rope catches those feet just like mine does. It's just a matter, am I ready to catch when I get to position, okay? Did I ride my horse good across the line? As a header, my first job is to score. If I back in the box and I'm kind of sitting like this, guess where all my body weight's at? It's already back. So when the gate's banging, my horse pushes, it throws me further back, my first swing is up. As opposed to being here, keeping my core balance locked in place. So when I do release, I'm already rolling here. That second swing, I'm ready to let it roll, okay? We can, we can talk about your delivery. We can talk about your swing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not as big a fan of talking about that because of this reason. You're not going to swing a rope just like me. I'm not going to try to get you to swing a rope just like me. I think you can rope better than that. But I also know that my stepdad, his shoulders and his elbows don't work anymore. And so when he swings a rope, it's like this. And it's completely wrong compared to what we're supposed to be doing as a header, right? So when he gets into position, he runs up there and he's stuck in this position. What does he have to do to catch? Go back to the fundamentals. Who said it? Yeah, right horn, left horn, slow it down. So does that mean he's not going to catch? No, he'll catch every single time if he goes back to those fundamental steps that allow us to catch. So it's, it's not as much about the swing in my mind as it is that your foundation, everybody wants to know at the end of the day, how do I go home and get better? How do I go home and get better? Well, 80% of the game is horsemanship. I'm not trying to tell you to make it all about your horse. I'm just saying, put a little more effort into your rope. I like to teach my students at those clinics because it's, it's, we're all guilty of this. That little mental belt buckle that you win is when you go catch that steer in the practice pen. Agreed? Go home and tell your wife how great a night you had in the practice pen. And then what do you come home and tell her the next night? Bad night. Rough. Why is it? Why? It's, it's pretty easier for all of us to fall in that trap because when we do that, what we're doing is we're going out there and we're putting all of our energy into this. We're going to put all of our energy into this because we're just so tickled that we're off work and we get to go rope and you're excited that you got a chance to do it. And what I like to tell my students is, don't put your success into the catch, put your success into the execution of the catch. That's how people go get better. You're gonna back in your box at home, and when you get set, how good did you score yourself? Not your horse, how good did you score yourself? 
The higher my hand goes, the higher what goes? Horse's head. So did I get locked in, get my core locked in to where I could leave with my horse and balanced? A little drill that I like to do right there is when I back in the box on my head horses and I get locked in and I nod my head, I don't wiggle. If my horse jumps six foot, I let him jump six foot, but guess what I never did? I never wiggled. I just stay there. And then all of a sudden that horse stops. He says, he still hasn't moved. What's wrong? They'll back up. They'll get set back into place. I'll nod my head and they'll just pitter-patter the second time. They don't push. They're waiting on that command to say, go. Okay? Your horses will not score consistently until you learn to score consistently. And, and anybody that comes up here and does a roping seminar, they're going to talk to you about that. They're going to talk to you about, we all know that the flatter those horses leave the corner of the box, Tyler Magnus was up here a while ago, the flatter those horses, if they stand up on all fours in the box and they're balanced, if they weigh 400 pounds, they've got 100 pounds of pressure on each foot. They're not squatting in the back, they're standing up, and when you nod your head, when you drop, they fire flat. Well, it's so much faster for them to run flat across that line than it is for them to rock up and come out. And guess what else is faster? If your horse leaves the corner flat, guess what you're doing? You're ready. Your tip is out and down and ready versus a horse that's coming up because I pulled on my tip goes up. And so I have to take the extra two or three swings to level it back off. So there's step number one. Step number two that I like to talk about after scoring is if I score, then my next step is open. I've got to get my shoulder square to my target. Even though my horse is in this lane over here, my target's going to be over there. I like to set saw, a sawhorse up in the box. If, you, if you're riding a jumping horse, it may not help you a whole lot, but if, if you take a sawhorse and you set it up in the front, front of your box from the chute side towards the middle of your box, it'll hold your horse in that lane. Because we, we don't want to get trapped coming out of the box to where we run right here and we get stuck right here. Now we've got to go here. Because that'll be the first thing that happens. That'll be the first thing that happens. When you go for your dally, you square back up to that saddle horn because you know you've got to move that direction. What happens to your horse? They get stuck in this position right here. And that's where we usually have to end up starting to inject hocks and stifles and their backs get sore. I've got to keep my shoulder square to my target. So, from the time that I leave the corner of the box and I release my horse, I leave, I open up. When I get to position, my tip's loaded. I come back and I'm still riding my horse here. Okay? Little things that make the biggest amount of difference. Something like this right here. Headers when you dally. Your rope is out there and you pull that slack and you go for your dally. You come around, if you get to this spot in your saddle horn, the top back left hand side of your saddle horn, you can stop right there because now you have a full dally, okay? You have a full wrap, but you can stop right there. What does that allow you to do? Push on that saddle horn and keep your shoulder square to your target. But if your hand ever comes off your saddle horn, guess where your body weight goes? It goes forward. You're trying to put your body weight over the saddle horn. Now your horse is at a weak state again. Now he's pulling with his front end like a plow horse instead of driving off of his rear end. But that little bitty thing right there makes a huge difference. Is that 25 minutes? Is that... Okay. Is everybody good? Does that make sense? And then again, after I score good and I open up, I square up to my target, then my tip is loaded and ready. This is where I want to discipline myself for balance. My tip, I got it on. Left hand. Left hand. Because this is where most everybody does this. They roll those shoulders back to that saddle horn, and now they're squared up to their horse's head again instead of square to that target. And those horses step out out of balance. Okay? And again, that's, it, it, it is a deal of coming back to your heels. I, I am, I'm, I'm a fan of, when, when I put a dummy on the rope right sled, I put the bones. We, we have the bones roping dummy on that, and, and the horns are stationary. 
the horns are stationary. I use that for that reason that once you catch one horn on that sled, guess what? You're stuck to it. You don't get to quit riding. And most people just quit right there. And that's only the first part of the run. So when, when we rope them, I want to be able to keep my horse moving forward and keep them soft. And, if, and as soon as you pull your slack headers, go ahead and dally. Because we've, we've all been in that spot to where you start a young horse, ride a four-year-old or a five-year-old, and what's the first thing we do? We run up there, we rope, we pull our slack, and we keep riding. And guess what you don't do on those four-year-olds? Why? Yeah, I'm starting to see the smiles. You don't crawl out over the front of those four-year-olds for what reason? Yeah, you don't want to end up on the ground. So you keep your seat, and you stay balanced, and all of a sudden you catch them like, wow, that was easy and then you pull your slack. The longer you hold your slack, the longer those horses will stay there. They, they won't ever try it. But as soon as you dally, what do they want to do? They want to start bumping those steers. They know their job. They pick it up really fast, especially your seasoned horses. So it doesn't matter if I'm riding a four-year-old, a three-year-old, whatever, or if I'm riding my finished head horses. When I deliver my rope and I rip my slack, I go straight to the post. And I get my dally, and I teach my horse to follow. I teach my horse to follow. If your horse is running through your hand, that's a good spot. If you, like a, the time machine or a, a sled that the horns turn loose, that's a good spot that when you rope, you stop your horse. Or the bones, whatever. If you're, it's stationary, have your breakaway rope and rope and stop. Or miss on, t on purpose. But sit down and stop your horse. Don't let them push through you and dictate when you get to rope and when you don't get to rope. Okay? Is, that, is everybody good so far? Am I, am I touching base on the problems that we run into on a daily basis? Because that's what we see on a daily basis. Now, left hand, left foot. Just keep that in mind. Another little drill, if I see a lot of ropers and they're, they're starting to pull on their horse and they're crawling out over the front of their horse and the left hand comes back, the left foot goes back. Okay? The left foot's going to go back. A friendly reminder, you can go get you a little leather strap or you can get you some kite string. Tie your stirrup, your left stirrup, to your cinch. That way, every time you go to push it back, it just reminds, reminds you to put it back down. Because when that foot goes back, if you do catch and you get your dally, where's your horse going to go? You're going to go out. The way we stand those horses up and handle steers and keep, handle cattle correctly is we pick the shoulders back up and put them back in balance. Okay? If they're out of balance, they're going to drop out on you. So when that left foot moves back, that's where those horses step out on you. Just whatever it takes, because I started the whole entire seminar out talking about what first? Mental discipline. Well, it's pretty easy for us to go make the mistakes. Where you're going to get better is whether or not you discipline yourself to go fix that mistake and whatever it takes. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? Because I know I'm going to get started on something else here in a minute. And they're going to run me off so Walt can come in. But I'll, I'm all about that. You good, John? Ladies and gentlemen, he'll be back here at 9.30 in the morning. 9.30 in the morning. 9.30 to 10.30. If you have Shana. any questions, yes. If you have any questions about what's going on at the uh, NRS roping facility or if you want to get signed up or have questions about signed up or more details, Shane is right here. Crease will be over here. You know, go over there, visit more about it. If you got any more questions about team roping, he'd be more than happy to talk to you. And uh, he'll be back here for a full hour tomorrow at 930 in the morning. Crease, thanks for, thanks for being here, buddy.